What's up, people? I'm Zog, and welcome back to FTB Infinity. Yes, yes, there is an ender chest on my head. It's kind of handy. I can just reach up and grab whatever I want. It's perfect. So, yep, I know. I know that there is a dirt block cube thing right there. I, I Hold your horses. We'll get to that in a minute. So, what? What in the world is this? Yeah, I have another one of those things over here. This one has a lever attached to it. So... It's awesome. I asked and you guys delivered. You guys are amazing. I love when you guys give me comments. Now this one was actually mentioned by my, you know, my real life best friend, but he's still a sub. So it counts as you guys. You all get the credit because you guys are all awesome. Anyway, so I asked for some kind of a containment thing to hold these guys in here and it's it, it works. It's perfect. So what is this thing? All right, let's go take a look at this guy. Woo, wait. This new armor is crazy. All right, give me my bag and then give me my wrench and then let's go and whack this guy with a wrench. All right, so, whoa, what? Yeah, basically these are shield templates from RF Tools. This is a shield projector from RF Tools. It just needs power and in some cases, if you set it properly, it needs a redstone signal. So that's why this one has a you know, lever attached to it because like I said, I wanted to be able to turn it on and off when I needed to because I like the way that this looks when it's just empty. Now there is a uh, hole. Let me show you because you probably already saw it, but there's a hole right here. Now, I don't know how to get around that because technically right here in this space is a shield template. It's just, you know, invisible and I can move through these blocks and they're, you know, they look like they're not there. So it's perfect. I just don't know how to fill in this block and make it look good while there's a shield template there. I don't know. Anyway, so that doesn't matter too much. I'm not too hugely concerned about that, but it's amazing because it works. Now, what you can do with this guy is pretty much anything. You can change the color of it, which I like the color I had. Wait, go back to that color. Uh, sure, that one, yeah. You can change the redstone mode, you know, ignored, off to activate, on to activate. You can set a block so it looks like a certain, you know, that's your camo block. Ooh, go back up. And when we turn this on. No! That's not what I wanted to do. Go up, go up, man. <laughs> I just teleported to the demon town. That's not what I wanted to do. All right, let's try this again. Let's try this again. Turn on. I thought you were supposed to be camouflaged. How is this working? Oh, set. There we go. No? What? I don't know. You're you're able to camouflage the thing. I just don't know why it's not working right now. Anyway, so you can also have it so you can set pass, solid, damage, solid, uh, move things. Um, entity that matches this filter cannot pass and gets damage. So... You can do a lot of different things. So I have players can pass through. I have hostile is solid, and that's how I did it. You just click add, and then you can go through. You have the damage, you know, entity that matches this filter can pass, but gets damage. Uh, I already showed you that one. You have solid. You have all this other stuff. You have hostile mobs, items, player, all passive. Oh everything so it's crazy you can do a lot of stuff with this stuff you can also set the damage to be player or generic and it's pretty amazing it's pretty cool that you can do this kind of thing but it works and it works really really well so you know my other wither uh killing thing that i had set up over here number one it was ugly as sin it was horrible i hated the way it looked but i needed a wither killer or at least a place where i could kill withers and, you know, if there was some kind of a base around it, the explosion that happens when he's put together, after he gets all his health, he explodes, he can actually damage blocks, even through the witherproof blocks. But this guy right here is super awesome because when we make a wither, you see everything around here is perfectly, you know, it's, it's surrounding it. If this wither were to blow up, in theory, it would destroy everything here. But if you notice... Well, uh, it's showing that he's at full health, but I'm pretty sure he's not. There he goes. But nothing's destroyed. He still can't see me. He can't shoot through it, and it's amazing. I can fly right through and just kind of be like, oh, 
You think you can hurt me? Nope. You sure can't, buddy. Ooh. <laughs> Fly through. Ooh. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> now I can also sit in here because this guy's really not going to hurt me too much. But uh, anytime I get low health or whatever, like, oh, no, I'm about to die. I can just fly right through the blocks. It's perfect. I love it. I absolutely love it. I think it looks amazing. I think it's great. It works fine. It's pretty awesome. And I did, I did test this one, too, just to be sure the elementals couldn't get through for some kind of a random glitch or something. And they can't. At least the one that I tried couldn't. So that works out perfectly. I love it. Now, that's, uh, that, that's some amazing stuff. Now, this cube here that I mentioned, I told you we were going to play with some of this stuff. Let me show you that I did get the Draconic flat Flux Capacitor, 250 million. I got it all the way charged up. I have this guy. I put on Sharpness 5, Efficiency 5, Looting 3, and Fortune 3. All on this guy. I still have my Silk Touch in my bag. This guy has those enchants. I didn't even worry about protection for these guys because nothing's really going to hurt me. Which, by the way, I still need to add on the other heart. I have plenty of hearts in my system. I just haven't done it. Now, the other thing is that I wanted to show you that you can actually... Uh, mess with this thing just like this uh, it's the grave which a lot of you probably know about but you know in order to take on and remove books you just drop them right in here you go to inventory but if you go back it shows everything right here so I've dig depth 9 just because I wanted to show you this thing we're gonna go up 9 by 9 and dig depth 9 check this thing out right okay so this is a 9 by 9 by 9 square so we got one, two, three, four, and here's the middle. So one, two, three, four, and here's the middle. Now it doesn't get the whole thing. I already did this once. But that is a lot of stuff dug out with one click. Just gone. All of it gone. It's amazing. It's awesome. But I don't like it that strong. I don't think I'm ever actually going to use that in any kind of practical way. I just figured I would show that to you because it's pretty awesome. So now I'm a one by one. At dig depth one perfect all right so uh, another thing I noticed is that the AOE 3 by 3 doesn't really seem to work maybe if I actually set it like change it you know back oh, 20, oh yeah you can go all the way up to 25 by 25 apparently uh, I don't know but we're just gonna there we go 3 by 3 we're gonna leave it on 3 by 3 because that's what the sword did and uh, I, I kind of liked it it was like the perfect amount from well, maybe, maybe one bigger, maybe five by five. I don't know. We'll play with that in a little bit. But that's about all the updates I wanted to show you. Let's put all this stuff in my system. And while we do that, let's go ahead. Where's the other things? I didn't get another star from that guy. What? Did I not go collect? Oh, you know what? My magnet's probably off. What is happening to these things? See, that worries me. I don't know where they go. Sometimes the things just disappear. I mean, they disappeared in the other one every now and then too, but... I don't know. That's odd. Anyway, I'm not too worried about it. I don't really need another star at the moment. So, what I want to do in this is I actually figured some stuff out for Batania. Now, it's going to be a little while before I can show you what I figured out because I have to work up to it. But we are going to start with Batania. Now, I had before, you know, a little tiny setup over here. And then, yeah, then I realized I needed a lot more expansion room, so I moved it off. It's going to end up going over off in this direction. This is where this is going to go. And eventually, we're going to have witchery. I'm going to have probably another, at least one more blood altar somewhere to do some more automation stuff in the future. So I need this path to continue off in this direction. And uh, Batania is going to be off in this direction. It's going to be in this area. And the uh, area for it, the design I have in mind is amazing. Like, I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, at least in my mind, I do. <laughs> we'll see how it actually comes together on uh, on canvas, so to speak. But the first thing I need to do is, is pretty much just set back up some of the basic stuff. Get some kind of basic mana generation going. And uh, I'm going to see if I can't figure out exactly the direction I want to go with this. We're going we're gonna to play with Batania, that's for sure, but how do I want to do it? All right, so there has been a slight detour in the plans, but I think you'll be okay with this. I think you'll like it. Now, what I need to do is for the whole Batania thing is actually build out a bit of a platform. And I figured I'd take this opportunity to go ahead and get the better Builder's Wand. And that way I can show you exactly how to do it, where to go, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, we can get this started here as soon as I can get to the end. The end. Perfect. Now, I have laid out, I've collected everything, and I'll, exp 
you know, I'll explain exactly how I did that and everything like that, how I got everything in just a second. But first, I need to find a decent place to set this up. And what I'm looking for is a flat-ish area with a decent amount of room around it. All right, so the reason I wanted the big flat area, by the way, this is everything you need for the ritual. And these are just chests. I'll explain what's in the, each of the chests here in a second. But first, I'm going to take out this beacon real quick. And I'm just going to plop it down in one of these areas. Should be enough room around it for uh, the next, the rest of the stuff we have to set up. And the rest of that stuff involves a whole bunch of string and redstone. So the first thing you want to do is go to two of the sides. I'm not sure if it matters which sides. Uh, we're just going to go here and hopefully it works. Does it go this way? I think. I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly how this works because uh, I I'm trying to do it from memory. And we're going to see because I know the redstone comes off of two sides like this. But I don't know if it's... Uh, if it needs to be north south certain things in this are oriented according to the cardinal directions and i don't know if that matters uh for this scenario but i do know that it's going to look something like this when it's finished is it one more than this or is it just that these are the kinds of things you should look up before you try something like this but let's see let's see i think that's it i think it is and then the string comes off of the other two sides and goes right in between it. Now the string is very hard to see. So if you're doing this, just make sure that you, you know, know that every single block, it's every single block in between the redstone. The redstone might have to go a little further, but there's something else you can do with this guy uh, here in a second. I'll show you. I'm going to fill this out real quick because I'm pretty sure oh, that's too high. I'm pretty sure this goes along like this and then you have the sigil now when you do this you need the active sigil that is important that it's the active one but you can shift right click on here and it says ritual marking strength 64 or 62 64 64 which means some things are missing so maybe I have to go out further. Let's see, those numbers, I don't remember exactly what they need to be. All right, okay, so here is what I did wrong. All right, when I went here and I saw this, I clicked on it, now you see everything is prepared, and we'll get to everything in just a second. But uh, you see the ritual marking strength. They don't need to be at 100, they need to be at 64. So basically, it doesn't matter the direction of these guys, how they go. The only stipulation is that they need to be switched around as far as, uh, you know, you have redstone and then you have string, redstone, string kind of thing all the way around. And just keep spiraling that until this says 64, 64, 64. That is what you need. And then we can go in here and actually see on the north side. And if you look at my compass in the top right hand corner, I'm pointed towards north. North is the fire stuff. This is all that stuff I was talking about, the children of fire. And again, we'll right, shift right click on this. You see, to the north, children of fire. To the south, gifts of earth. You know, uh, descendants of water and spices of air. So then we can go to the east, and that is your potions. You have all of the potions, 12 different effects, and that's good to go. And then on the south, we have all of the gifts of the earth kind of thing with the diamond ore, the emerald ore, and all that good stuff. And then to the other side, you have the West, which is all of the records. And as I showed you already, everything is prepared. Sacrifice one who would sacrifice himself. Now, what do you suppose that means? Yep, yep, that means it's a golem dude. Oh, go ahead and build this guy out real quick. We're going to launch him and we're going to show you, or I'm going to show you, let me go ahead and uh, eat real quick. Now, as soon as I make this, he likes to, to roam around. But... Come on, man. Die. Die. Boom. It's a boom thing. So now what it is, you see down there, the siege has begun in the end. And the idea is that you just have to kill a bunch of mobs. So, uh, go away. You. Ooh. Goodbye. We're going to fly, but only a little bit. Because I know uh, in the beginning... Uh, the first time I did this, you see down there, it's actually counting my kills. And that's important to, to see, sort of, because you, you need a certain amount of kills. I kill everybody in one hit, so these guys really don't bug me. But, uh, and I'm really not going to die. 
But you get up to a certain amount of kills. I think it's 100. I'm not 100% on that anymore. But the first time I did this, when I was flying in the air, it actually started to hurt me. Like, it, it, it gave me, I think, fire damage, actually. It started trying to burn me, but I'm immune to fire, so I don't know if that matters now. The basic idea is that I just kill all of these guys. And there's a lot of them. They get a little more dangerous and stuff. But... As you notice, I'm not having any trouble with it because these guys really can't hurt me at all. I kill everybody in one hit and I, I hit people in a huge area. My kills are skyrocketing, you know. None of this really matters. <laughs> it's, it's pretty awesome how that happens. How that works. Hi, witches. Witches are even more dangerous. But you see that all of the... Uh, oh, wait. Don't blow up. I need to kill you. You see that all of the um, endermen are gone. They, they're, they're not here right now because of the siege. Well, I guess some of them are. But it's not, uh, you know, it's not their world right now. This is all about the siege. And you basically just keep killing things until you get to a certain amount of kills. And uh, then you pretty much, it's it's done here in just a second. I should be there pretty, pretty quick. Ooh, googly eyes. I like that hat. That's a pretty good one. Uh, that, ooh, where are you? Die. Oh, oh man, you poisoned me. I still don't like poison. Bunch more little guys, come on now. How many of you guys are there? Jeez. Just die already. 78, I think it's 100. I hope it's only 100. Come on, man, you're hard to hit. Man, these guys are... <laughs> freaking poison. I get it. I get it. You you favor poison, man. I don't like poison, though. I don't like it. I don't like poison. Are you... Am I almost there? I think I'm almost there. What do I need? Ten more kills? Seven more? Oh, there's got to be more people. Come on, now. Where are you going, people? Ooh. Oh, I stabilized. Your, your sigil has stabilized, and now the endermen are back. As soon as you finish it, you're done. And the Endermen are back. The siege is over. Everything's done. Uh, your ritual area is no longer there. You know, things just blowed up. Blowed? Blow I totally just said blowed up. Anyway, the basic idea is that you're done now. So that's pretty much the way that works. We can send everything back into our system because we don't need them anymore. And uh, let's see. You got witch's hands, zombie heads. You got all the loot drops. No big deal there. But if you look at this guy, it's now a pseudo-inversion sigil, and it's stable. So let's go take a look at what we can do with this guy. All right, so now we're back at base. And if we look, take a look, this is what you normally get from a regular old sigil. Like, if I go here and go to sigil, and if one of these was activated, I could put it right down here where the pseudo-inversion sigil is, and it would show me one of these in the finished uh, slot. This is error divided by diamond, this... Ingot is highly unstable and will explode after 10 seconds. It'll blow you up and make you uh, lose everything. It's it's crappy. Hmm. That stinks. But what you can do with the pseudo-inversion sigil, what we just turn this sigil into is a way to get stable, unstable ingots. I can just go ahead and get a few of these guys. This doesn't matter. These aren't going to blow up. These don't take 10 seconds or anything like that. They can just kind of sit in my inventory. I'm going to go ahead and make, I made 64 of them. That's probably good. Plus the five. No big deal. They're not going to blow up. Nothing's wrong with it. They're just like any other item and it's awesome. Now, what we can do with these guys is you notice the wand here. The recipe for the wand is to use one of these unstable ingots. But if we use one here, a stable version of it, it will give us the super builder's wand. Okay, so the original version of the Builder's Wand has a total uh, blocks. Like, the amount of blocks that it can place for you is nine. That's the most it can do. This guy is uh, a, a bit more than that. This entire row. This is 25 blocks long right now. This is just something that I can do with this guy. And it's, it's pretty amazing. All I got to do is just keep backing up a little bit, right-clicking, and this entire platform is going to be built. Now, you'll see what this platform is going to be used for in just a second. I'm going to set a few more things up, and then I'll bring it back and explain what the heck is going on. All right. So I have done quite a bit of work, actually. Um, it's not going to look like a whole lot, but it actually is. Because I had to figure some things out. And I'm going to tell you exactly what I figured out. 
All right, so those of you who saw my last series, my last modded series, the Mod Saw series, I, uh, I went through and I made something very similar to this. Now, in that one, this, uh, this part right here, these uh, Annihilation Planes were actually in the middle above, and it worked the same way. This will work the same way, but all it really does, all it will do, is if you know anything about Batania, you use stone to get the uh, Batania stone, and you use wooden logs to get the uh, Batania logs. And you have these flowers in the middle, which aren't here yet. Um, I'll be putting those in in just a little bit. But then you have these formation planes. Now the way the ME system works is that when something comes in to the system, you know, through the quarry or through whatever means like this or anything like that, you see all this stuff flying in right here. The ME system looks for valid places to put it. All right, so the storage system right here is going, you know, it's going to see the storage system. It's going to see uh, various other places for things. For example, down here in the formation planes are also valid places to put things. And that means that without these filters right here, it would sometimes choose to put, you know, ore here or stone here or whatever else here, which is why I have gone through already and put in the acacia wood with a priority. Now, the priority says that if there is multiple storage places, pick the thing with the highest priority first. Unless it can't be put there, then go to the next priority, and so on and so forth. So right now, these things are highest priority, the highest priority in my system for acacia wood. And this one right here is the highest priority possible, or in the system at the moment, for stone. So it's going to put stone here until it's all filled up, and then it will go into the storage. And that's basically what I had to do. That's why you have to come here and set the priority. That's why you have to, uh, you know, make sure you put in the filter is because the uh, the ore will sometimes come here too. And the ore can't be converted into the Batania stone version. So that's not a big deal. But that's just why I've already set this up. That's why you already see these things here. Uh, and, and that's just how that's going to work. Now, as far as this is concerned... Uh, once the flowers are in place, this wood will be trans, uh, transmuted, I guess would be a, an appropriate word. And this stone will also be transmuted into the Batania versions. So how do I automate this? That's what this is doing. This is automating the entire process. So then underneath these guys, I actually have pistons. And I'm going to have a timer circuit on both sides that is going to trigger these every so often. So that length of time is going to be long enough to let them change into their Batania versions and then it's going to push them up. And these Annihilation Planes, all they do is destroy anything that's put in front of them and move it into the system. So these are going to be changed into their Batania version, pushed up, destroyed, and sucked into the system by these guys right here. And that's pretty much how it's going to work. It's just going to be a timed circuit. They'll push up go into the system, pull back down, and the formation planes will be like, oh, we need to put in more uh, more stone. And the other side will say, hey, we need to put in more acacia wood. Now, the problem with this is that in order to actually get these things to place them, it doesn't take things from the system. You know, all of my acacia wood is already stored in the system, which means it's not going to take it from it, which is why these last two slots right here don't have anything in them. These popped up because I put something back into the system. So what we need to do is create a recycling chest and actually have things pumped out and put back into the system so it kind of rotates through our stock in a way. And that way, as soon as things are available to be put here, they will be because these two items, the acacia wood and the stone, will be constantly circling back into the system over and over and over again. And we don't have to worry so much about it. But that's all I'm really going to do. I'm going to put down the flowers that I need. I'm going to come up with some kind of a system to allow these things to be recycled back through. And uh, I'm also going to hook up the timer circuit for the pistons so that everything here should be automated. And then we can get a whole bunch of stone and uh, batania wood. Batania stone and batania wood. All right. And here we go. This is, uh, this is pretty much what it is, and yes, I kept saying Batania version or Batania alternative and transmutation and a whole bunch of other words basically meant I didn't remember what these things were called. 
But it's living rock and living wood. That's what they're called. That's what I should have been calling them, but I could not for the life of me think of what they were called. I don't know why. I just couldn't. Anyway, so I looked them up and I figured it out. But this is basically what's going on. You know, the Pistons are pushing them up after they're turned into, you know, in this case, living wood. And the Annihilation Plane will pick them up, put them into the system. And then I have the thing, the uh, <laughs> chest here, that is cycling through them all. Now, you don't see anything in the chest. And that's because this has only three acceleration cards, but it has stone and acacia wood. And then this side has four acceleration cards. So as soon as they're going in this chest, they're being picked up. And it's pretty much that instantaneous. But this over here is detecting that new acacia wood and new stone is coming into the system. This one, for some reason, takes time. I don't know why. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking it's somehow related to these quantum chamber things here, quantum rings. And I don't know. It's just, it sometimes takes a little while for it to pick up the stone, uh, and actually put it down. You see right here, this is the, the annihilation plane stuff. For some reason, they are just incredibly slow. In my mod saw series, if you remember, it was instant. It was great. It worked fantastic. As soon as it was pushed up. All of the living wood stuff was broken and instantaneously at the same exact time pretty much new wood was placed and it was fine. It worked all right. I don't know why it's so slow now. It has to be something with the quantum rings because that's pretty much the only thing that changed between the two versions. But something is going on. I don't know what it is, but something. So that, eh. But it doesn't really matter too much because if you look at my living wood and living rock, it I am going up. You know, I am increasing and I don't have to worry about it. It's not something and there's some of the stone. All of it didn't get picked up. I don't know. Uh, soon enough, there's the wood. You know, it's that kind of a thing. Like it will eventually work. Eventually it will it will work. It will take down all of the living stuff. It will, you know, place down new things. And as you see here, even though it was gone out of place for a while, it still transferred it in the same amount of time. Which is interesting. It's very interesting that it works that way, but it does seem to work that way. I don't know what exactly is going on with it, why it takes different amounts of times for different stone and stuff, but it, I don't know, it is working. And that's pretty much all I'm worried about at the moment. Later on, if you guys know of a reason why things are taking so much longer or anything along those lines, then feel free, let me know. See if I can, I don't know, make it work better it's a little inconsistent right now but the bottom line the absolute bottom line is that i am gaining living wood and living rock i know i've been going on about this for a little while but it is working and that is the bottom line at the moment now down here i didn't really explain because it's, it's kind of simple i have the quantum rings one of these is auto botania and the other is auto botania 2 and then I have the other sides on the back side of this, which I'll show you in just a second. Uh, I figured this part of it out, all right? So these things do give off power, right? But they need a jump start. They need a kick start. And I believe I got a comment about this a little while ago. Uh, these things, as long as you have, as long as they have a little bit of charge to jump start these guys, then once these guys are active, it can charge it back up. So this is like just a battery backup. These guys might go offline every now and then if they don't have enough power or whatnot. But at the same time that this guy is powering both of those, both of these are also charging it back up. So the only thing you need over here in order to keep these things active is an energy cell attached to one of these four big points because this is where you know it has access to power and everything. But as long as you have this guy, these guys will stay on indefinitely. And I didn't need the entire setup with the energy acceptor and the Tesseract and any of that other good stuff. I can change the other ones out uh, and just have an energy cell. It's, it's working pretty well. Every now and then you'll see this dip down below 200 KAE, but it'll charge back up uh, before too long. It's, it's kind of interesting, kind of cool how it does that. It's like a battery backup kind of deal. Anyway, so that's the basic idea of this stuff. Now, the reason I want so much living wood, or not living wood, actually, I'm looking for living rock, and I need a lot of it. So I'm going to be sitting here for a while. Probably going to happen off camera. But the reason I want so much is because I need 625 monopoles. What? 
Yes, 625. Now, you'll, you will see why in uh, probably the next episode, I'm hoping. Hopefully the next episode. Uh, because I need a lot of these guys. I need some of these guys. And I need 625 monopoles. But for right now, I'm just sitting here waiting for all the living rock, living wood. Living, yeah, just living rock. Living wood, I don't need too much right now. But living rock needs to get done pretty quick because that is how you make a monopole. And that's what we're working on. That's what I want to get one of these guys. And then I have to throw them all into, you know, mana infusion style. Get the fully powered uh, deep storage monopole here. I need 625 of them. Yeah. Yeah, I need a lot. Anyway, so I'm going to get started on that. I'm going to be waiting for this stuff. i will probably run it overnight so I get a whole bunch of living rock. We're going to see what happens with that. Hopefully nothing screws up or whatever, but we'll see. And that way, in the next episode uh, here, hopefully tomorrow, I'll start recording it. I'll have enough for 625 monopoles. That's a lot. That's a whole lot. Holy crap. What am I doing? Anyway. <laughs> that's the basic idea oh man i'm getting excited for this i'm getting excited for it guys it's cool anyway so uh if you like the episode don't forget to hit that like button if you want to see more you want my videos sent directly to you then don't forget to subscribe comment favorite share if you feel like you want to thanks so much for watching and i will see you next time bye